Hello, in this video I'll be going over basically um, the proof for the formula of um, time dilation in special relativity. So this video is basically, it's going to show where this formula comes from and understand it conceptually. So we get this idea of time dilation from these, basically from special relativity. So special relativity has two postulates. Basically, so this is the first postulate, postulate one of special relativity. The laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames of reference. Now, what does that really mean? Well, to understand that, you need to understand what a frame of reference is. So a frame of reference is a, a point where you are in space, whether you're at rest or traveling at a constant velocity or constant speed. Basically, it's saying while you're in a, a constant, while you're in a reference frame, we either, you're either at rest or traveling at a constant speed, the laws of physics will be the same in your reference frame as if in the same as other reference frames. So the laws of physics stand. Uh, I'll probably do a better video on the in-depth of a reference frame. Uh, postulate number two. The speed of light the speed of light is the same oh, same value in all inertial frames of reference. So that's pretty easy to understand. The speed of light is constant no matter where you are in the universe or what you're doing. Um, and nothing can go faster. So the speed of light is denoted as C, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that, if you will, is the universe's speed limit. Nothing can go faster than that. And you can see, um, well, people began, well, a particular person, Einstein, realized that if the speed of light is true, if it's constant, other things such as length and time cannot be constant then because it will I'll show you why it uh, defies the laws pretty much of physics it will defy the posture that if time if time was constant things could travel faster than the speed of light but if the speed of light is constant which it is constant then time can't be absolute so let's just consider a scenario you consider a person is on a rocket. So you have someone here. And they're standing here and they want to measure how long it takes from a photon from a let's say there's a laser beam here and it's getting shot at the ceiling. And let's say they want to work out how how long it takes for the photon photon to reach the top. Okay? So they want to work out the time it takes to get up there. So recall that velocity is distance over time. So um, distance is velocity times time. So this distance here can be denoted, um, oh, the velocity of light is c. So the distance here, is, so distance is the same as c times t. So this distance here is c times t. Okay. Um, let's actually denote it as t o. That's t o. Right. So this, what I've done over here is just the distance. It's basically the height of the ship, pretty much. This is, and yep. So the, the distance is C times T O, which T is the time of this man, the time what this guy sees. Um, let's give him a name. Let's call him uh, Cooper. Good old Cooper, All right? Now, Consider another scenario. Consider you have the rocket and it's moving um, in this direction. So I'm just going to draw the rocket in two forms. So this is Cooper here. He's still in the ship. 
and he's got the laser here, he's got here. And let's consider someone like, uh, let's call this guy Slim. He's outside the rocket and he's watching this rocket move from left to right. What's, what, will the, what light path will Slim see? Slim will see the light, instead of going up and down like Cooper sees here, the path that the light will travel for Slim will be something like this. And it will hit there. Pretend that's like a... Let me just bring that up a little bit so it matches a bit more. So, you'll see like... You'll see a different path. You'll see this path here. Alright? This distance the light travels here will not be the same as this distance here, up here. So he'll see some distance C times T. And T is the time Slim sees. And TO is the time that Cooper sees. Okay? So I'm just going to put this stuff up here for now. Alright? Okay. Alright, so if time doesn't depend on your frame of reference, for the photon to be going a further distance here, it would have to be travelling faster than the speed of light. But since since the dis so um this distance here I'm gonna do now is S of zero is C times T O. This distance here is going to be a bigger distance than um, S of O. So I'm just going to call S is C times T. So S is greater than S of O. Right? So if time doesn't depend on your frame of reference, and hence if time was constant, for this to be true, the speed of light would have to change. In other words, the speed of light wouldn't be constant. However, we know the speed of light is constant. Therefore, for this to be true, time is not absolute. Meaning people, depending on what speed you travel, can measure different times. So these so Slim and um, what's his name here, so I'm just going to let that sit for a second. Cooper and Slim will agree on the velocity of the photon. However, they will disagree on the time it took to go from up and down from the light beam to go up the ship because slim is seeing a bigger distance therefore he has to see if the velocity is the constant he has to see a different time for it to be true i hope that makes sense so they won't see the same time because if the speed of light is constant then time cannot be constant for this scenario if this scenario is true which it is okay so this is the time he time that um slim sees and to is the time that cooper sees okay all right so we can actually derive a formula from this so we know that this height here is cto and we know that this distance here is going to be the velocity of the ship times time. Okay? It will be the time of Slim. So Slim is still here. Sorry, I keep rubbing him out. Slim is here. So the distance here will be velocity of the ship times the time that Slim sees. The distance here will be the speed of light times the time that Slim sees. And the height here will be the speed of light times the time that Cooper sees. Okay? So, using that idea, we can basically just make a triangle over here. So, this is a right angle triangle. So, we have VT, CTO, and CT. Alright? I'm just going to rub out our scenario now because we don't need it anymore. We've got all we need here to derive our formula for time dilation. 
Okay? So I'm just going to rub this out. And you're probably thinking, right angle triangle, we can probably, we can use Pythagorean's theorem, can't we? Because it applies in all right angle triangles. So recall that the Pythagorean's theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Therefore, CT or squared is equal to VT or squared plus CTO or squared. So simplifying that, C squared T squared is equal to V squared T squared plus C squared T O squared. That's a mouthful. We're going to make T the time that Slim sees the subject. So when you mean the subject, we can have T equals blah, blah, blah. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to simplify this expression here in terms of just T instead of TO. So I'm just going to move this term over to the left hand side. So we're going to have C squared T squared minus V squared T squared equals C squared T O or squared. I'm going to divide by C squared. So simplifying this side, TO squared is equal to T squared because that will cancel there and there'll be a C squared there. So I'm just going to rub that out and just going to apply it here. Minus the V squared, T squared, all over C squared. All right. Cool. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller here. Whoopsie daisy. Hold up. I'm just going to move that there. And I'm going to move this up here. So we can finish our derivation. All right. Um, on the right hand side, we can take out um, a factor of t squared. And now all we're going to do is square root the, um, oops, we're going to square root the left hand side and the right hand side. TO equals, when you square root t squared, you're just left with t. So I'm just going to simplify. That's just going to be t. Oh, sorry. That's just going to be t. And square rooting that, that's just going to be 1 over v squared over c squared. Right, all we got to do is divide by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So then t is equal to to over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Making this a bit smaller so I can talk about this formula here some more. This is the formula for time dilation. This right here. You'll see it in many physics books. You might, um, they might write it differently. So I'm just gonna simplify what each term in this actually means in terms of solving physics problems. So T is the time of someone who's observing an object move pretty much move relative to him and to is the time of someone in the object i'm running out of room in the object that is moving so what i mean by that so i'm just going to rub out our proof here now because we don't need it anymore. We're physicists, not mathematicians. So that's where our formula comes from. So all we've got to do is basically understand what we're trying to find now. So let's consider let's consider another rocket problem. So we have old mate here. We have, let's say we have um, Smith and we have uh, Jared or just jarred, jade or something. And Smith is in a rocket traveling at a velocity of some V. TO is going to be the time of Smith. And T is going to be, a T is going to be the time of J. Okay? So this term here is going to be this T here. This T here. Is that t there 
and of course our V is the same in there, right? Whoopsie daisy. So that's where our formula comes from, and that's what each term basically means. So that's pretty much the end of the video. That's where our time dilation formula comes from. So T equals TO over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay? Um, so this basically all arrived from Einstein, because he's a smart cookie. Um, if you might see in textbooks, T is relativistic time, and TO is proper time. So when you see proper time, just think object at rest. And when you see relativistic, see object at um, object that's moving. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video.